Well, what's up, Rivers Carson? It's so good to see you today. Why don't you stand up on your feet? Let's worship the Lord together. Come on. Come on, put those hands together. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul. Come on. This bag of bones. Come on, let's sing it out. And I tried with all my might. That's it. But I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Yeah. A bag of bones. Yeah. Come on. And just when I ran out.
I'm keeping nothing back from who you are. No hidden treasure veil by key or lock. You're a lifetime worth of worship, and that's only just the start. So here it is, my every waking. The minutes, hours, the years of endless race. For your worthy far beyond all I could say. There's a lifetime worth of worship in the nuance of your name. So let it rise like incense. My whole life, a fragrance every hour. Every breath and offering my heart cries, these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Your eyes.
fragrance, every ounce here broken at your feet. And every breath be an offering, cause my heart cries and these lungs sing over you. Oh, my worthy King of Kings. Will y'all pray with me? Lord, we're, we're standing in the first Sunday of a new year and we're saying, we're giving every day to you. We surrender it all to you. We don't know what's ahead for us, but we know the one who's ahead of us. And so we surrender and we thank you for the gift of another year. We thank you for the time that we get to spend together in worship and we love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Y'all can say hello to someone and then have a seat. Happy New Year. Welcome to Rivers Crossing. My name is Sammy Moss. I have the absolute honor of serving here on staff, and I cannot think of a better way to kick off 2022 than to be with you guys. So thank you for starting my year off great. And if you are new not only to 2022, but also to Rivers Crossing, welcome. Thanks for checking us out today. We'd love to send you home with a free gift. It's yours at the welcome desk on your way out. So pick that up as you're leaving. We'd also love to give you some tools to get to know us a little better. Uh, check out our mission, our vision, how we got started, all the stuff we've got going on. That's available by following us on social media at Rivers Crossing or by downloading the Rivers Crossing app where you can take notes with today's sermon, but also keep up with all that's coming your way in the new year, like baptisms, women's Bible study, and and the 21 day fast, which kicks off next Monday, January 10th. Fasting is something that we have done as a church for the first three weeks of a new year since the very beginning of Rivers Crossing. Uh, it's a spiritual discipline that allows us to step back, to reflect, to reset spiritually. Uh, and we believe that the fast is a fast from food. It's ceasing some kind of food. So that looks different for everyone. There's information, ideas, answers to all your questions in our fasting guide on the app. But you might choose to do a liquid only diet for 21 days. You may choose a plant-based diet, or you can join me in fasting from sugar and diet Coke, and we'll keep each other accountable for the next three weeks. <laughs> but we believe so strongly about fasting because Jesus believes so strongly about fasting that no matter if you fasted and prayed for seasons of your life before, if you've never started, that you can start right now this year and seek the Lord really clearly in 2022. It's the first thing that Jesus did before he started his public ministry. He went into the wilderness by himself for 40 days and he fasted. And then when the early church was given the great commission by Jesus, how they mobilized, how they spread the gospel was they fasted and prayed first. So before God's gonna do something big in our lives, he's gotta do something big inside of our hearts. Uh, so maybe there's something you've been talking the Lord's ear off of for the last year of your life. Maybe there's a question you need answered. There's some guidance, some clarity you're seeking. All of that can, can happen, not only because we're focused on what we're fasting from, but what we're fasting for. And so if you don't have that big thing, we've got 21 days of prayer prompts also available in the app of what we're fasting for collectively as a church. We're gonna be praying the same things together every single day during the fast, which is so cool that, that we're going to fast for things together for our city, for our church, for our ministry outside of these walls. It's just a really great way to start a new year seeking heart after Jesus. So join us 21 day fast starting next Monday. Today's a super special Sunday at Rivers Crossing. We've got the Block Church from Philadelphia taking over. So Pastor Joey Forjanic is with us. But first, before he comes out, will you stand with me, continue in worship with the Block's worship pastor, Derek King. Everyone, as we stand today, as we go into this new year, it can be very easy to just go into it without any plan or any vision or maybe our own plan, our own vision. But I believe it's so important for us to wait on the Lord and I don't want us to just sing this song, but I wanted to make it our prayer today that, Lord, we'll wait on you. So come on, would you sing this with me? I don't believe in fairy tales. I guess I've outgrown them. But that doesn't mean that I don't believe that there's something bigger than me. Because I've seen it in a hospital room when the doctor said sorry. There's nothing more we can do. Well, it wasn't through. I've never seen a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But I've got a promise I can hold in the middle of the struggle. God, if you said it, 
You perform it may not be how I want you to. But here's what I'll do. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Yeah. I'm tasting your goodness. Trust in your promise. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Yes. I'm tasting your goodness. Trust in your worship him today I know you've ordered every step yeah you are the author but there's no predicting what is next but you hold the future and all the questions that come second to the one I know is true yeah you've always been Yesterday, he will be faithful and exceed our expectations this year and tomorrow beyond anything we could ask, dream, or imagine. Do you believe that today? So I want to I want to enter 2022 with the kind of energy that believes that anything's possible, that victory is ours, that we're gonna reach our potential. 
You walked in through a door today, but don't just walk through a door. Come to an altar. Bring a sacrifice of praise and say, this year, God, we wait on you and we settle for nothing less than all you have for us in 2022. I want to give my whole life, my whole family, my whole body, all my business. God, this year, take residence in me. You can have it all. That's why we worship. That's why we sing. That's why we declare we're waiting on you, God. That's why we lift our hands to say we're fully surrendered. So as your first act as a community, as your first first act as a people of God in 2022, can we literally say, God, you can have it all this year? If you're a guest with us today, no worries. This may not uh, reference you, but if you're a believer, can you take your whole body, your hands, everything? Can we lift it high to the sky, all our heart, all our mind, all our soul? God, we will settle for nothing less than for you to have all of us in 2022. And as we sing this again, and as we declare this, God, take residence in us. We're building altars. We're bringing a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, saying, God, this year is the year of the Lord in our life. Not partially, not half, but everything. Come on, you believe that? You agree with that today? Can we sing that one more time? One more time. I'm going to wait on you. I'm tasting your good. Trust in your promise. I'm gonna wait on you, yeah. I'm gonna wait on you, yeah. Taste it. I tasted your goodness. Trust in your promise. Trust in your promise. Oh, say, I'm gonna wait on you, yeah. Wait on you. Taste it, your goodness. I've tasted your goodness. Trust in your You can say anything you want to us. We, we, make a, we make a holy moment. We, we create an altar and a space for you to speak to us. Put dreams in us right now. Convict us of sin right now. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for all you did. We, we're believing for greater in 2022. playing no games this year. We're believing for greater, more salvations, more healings, more wonders, more victory. God, we're believing for the unbelievable. We're, 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 we're standing on your word today and we say, God, you can have us, you can have everything. 22, we hold nothing back from you. We create an altar today, bring a sacrifice of praise. We love you. We need you. Our hearts are open. Our mind is open. We wait for you to speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, you believe that today. Would you say yes and amen? Come on, can we give God a shout of praise today? God, we love you. We worship you today. Come on, River Crossing. God, we give you our best today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Well, welcome to church. Are you glad you're in the house of God today? Amen. 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 Maybe the Bengals make the playoffs this year. Is it possible? Come on. Look at somebody next to you. Give them a high five. Say hello. Say anything's possible. Anything's possible. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, welcome. Welcome to church. My name is Joey. And uh, I'm the lead pastor of the Block Church uh, in Philadelphia. So uh, I'm not the lead pastor here. If you don't like today, I believe lead pastor will be back next week. Amen. Uh, But you are stuck with me today. I do believe God has a word for you. I do believe God has something he wants to say to you. I hope you felt God's presence today uh, in this house and that you carry that with you all through the year. Honored, honored to be here. I want to welcome uh, our online community. Can we say hello to them, everybody watching online? Come on. Uh, also want to say to my pastor, Pastor Paul and Farah, I love you so much. Honored and thankful that you bring me here to speak to your people and uh, grateful for our pastors and so grateful for their ministry in our life. I also want to greet my family and I have a brand new baby. And uh, so I want to show you my family. This is, uh, first picture is Maverick, my son, and Phil, the dog. Usually, yeah, usually you name your, your, uh, your dog Maverick, but I named my son Maverick and my dog Phil, <laughs> short for Philadelphia. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a nutcase, uh, so is my son. But I do have a little angel that God gave me. Her name is Jovi Marie, Jovi Marie. And uh, she's perfect, and uh, and she's been w- she is easier as a, as a seven week old than my crazy son is as a four year old, but I love him with all my heart, you know. And uh, but she's so perfect. I'm so grateful. Kids are a gift, amen. And uh, Jovi Marie, we just believe in she's going to be full of joy and laughter. And so, brand new baby. Shout out to my wife who let me come here today. Uh, with a seven week old. So I get to, I got to sleep last night. It was amazing. (laughs) So I'm just going to try to stay here as long as I can. (laughs) Anyway, excited to get in God's word and uh, 2022. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Last couple years been challenging, haven't they? For some, a lot of gains, a lot of amazing things for others, a lot of grieving, but whether you're grieving today or whether you're gaining today, I believe there's more for you and God's best is ahead for you. I really believe that. And uh, it's a new season. It's, it's a new year. And, and just because the calendar turned uh, doesn't necessarily mean something new is happening. But I do believe spiritually our mindset is transformed. There's something telling us that there's a fresh start, right? Gyms are, are offering you deals, right? Uh, new opportunities, all that stuff. The, the world tells us there's something new, but spiritually, I believe there's something new that we can grasp today. I really think I have a rhema word, a word directly from heaven for our church and for the body of Christ. I really believe that. Speaking of new seasons or fresh starts, uh, I was an awful student growing up. Any teachers, educators in the house? I just want to apologize to you. Forgive me uh, for how I acted when I was uh, a teenager. I have this disorder. It's called attention deficit. And uh, it's, it's, it's my superpower, but it's also uh, a pain in the neck for everybody else. And, uh, and so growing up, I was just a crazy maniac kind of kid, you know. And, uh, and I just didn't do well in school. I just didn't like... For a couple years, my parents put me on Ritalin. And uh, I was, I'm actually, I'm actually a genius, I think, because for two years when I was on it, I made good grades. Come on, somebody. But I lost my personality. And so my parents are like, you know what? We'd rather have a, a psychopath for a child and, you know, deal with the, you know, maybe the occasional phone call from, from the teacher. So here's what I was doing in high school. I'm this confession. Please forgive me. Judge me not. Uh, I would try to rally the class to bomb tests, especially if they were surprises. I know, don't judge me. I'm, I'm a Christian now. Uh, because, because, here's the thing. Uh, I knew that if everybody did bad, they would either grade it on a curve or we would take the test again because if everybody failed, the teacher would be like, well, that, that looks bad on me. So I'd be like, look, guys, I would be lobbying people for weeks. Hey, if there's a surprise, surprise 
quiz coming. We got to bomb it because we'll know the material and then we get to take a new test, fresh start, and then we all win together. I was going to go into politics, but I decided not to. (laughs) So I was like, because there's something about like, like a fresh start from when you learned where you failed. You know what I'm talking about? Like you've learned where you've missed it. And then you get a fresh start or a second chance. All of a sudden, you've got a better opportunity to do better. Did you know that the kingdom of God is really all about second chances? Amen? Yeah? Okay. If you've received a second chance, you know know exactly what I'm talking about. The kingdom of God is all about fresh starts and new seasons. The Bible says that when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. In other words, you've been graded on the curve of the gospel, and that's good news. I I read a quote the other day uh, that says, All the saints who Paul, the apostle, martyred were the first ones standing at the gates of heaven as he entered in, clapping and cheering for him. Isn't that so beautiful? Because because that's what the gospel is. It's, I've missed it. I've messed up. I'm imperfect. I failed. Yet for some reason, the grace of God is so big and so large and so unbelievable that a wretch like me can be saved and given a fresh start. That's good news. And that, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the kingdom that we're a part of that we get fresh starts. Another word for fresh starts is new seasons. And I believe today it's a new season. And if you would allow me to, I just want to prophesy over this house. I want to declare prophetically right now over you that this is a new season for Rivers Crossing. This is a new season for you watching at home. That the best days are ahead. That good things that have happened, greater things are still to come. Bad things that have taken place, healing and victory is on the way. I believe that this is a season of increase for the body of Christ. Come on, talk to me. I believe this is a season of winning. I believe that the tears that you sowed in dark seasons, you will reap in joy in this coming season. I believe for victory over your businesses, victory in your house and in your marriage and with your kids. I really believe that the people of God are getting ready to experience unbelievable, undeniable, incredible, it doesn't make sense kind of victory. I believe it's a new season for believers. I believe that. And I declare that over you. I prophesy it over you. This church has seen nothing yet. First few years, been great. Just wait. What's coming is unbelievable. I, and I declare that over you and I speak that prophetically because I believe that the people of God, the true people of God, because there's been a sifting, there's been a shaking, but those who stood and waited, God hasn't forgotten you. God hasn't failed you. God is going to pour his blessing over you. He is. It's a new season. Do you believe that today? If you do, can you look at somebody and just tell them, look them in the eyes, tell them, it's a new season. Look at somebody, it's a new season. That's the title of my message today. And uh, I'm going to go to Joshua chapter 1 and, uh, and 3. Before I read, let me set you up. Let me give you a little context, okay? Um, Joshua 1 and 3. Joshua, son of Nun, is about to take over for the people of God. Now, Moses has been leading the Israelites for 40 years. And he's been leading them in circles around the desert. Ultimately, ultimately, he led them out of slavery. Moses did. They were slaves to the Egyptians. But the problem was, is the Israelites, while they were slaves physically, they never really left their slavery emotionally. You know, you can get set free, if you will, but still be bound. Let me say it like this. Peter Scazzaro says it. He says, you know, you can be free in your spirit or your heart, but still be bound in your bones. And what that means is, is sometimes there are generational iniquities. There are things passed down to you from family or from experiences that if you don't put in the work... Your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak and the grace over you, right? You haven't done the work to overcome the barriers of the iniquity. Does that make sense? So you've been living a certain way for 40 years. You meet Christ. Well, there's still some hangups that you've got some work to do. 
It's why we have things like, like celebrate recovery. It's why we got things like discipleship and school. Come on, somebody celebrate recovery, right? It's why we got stuff like that because we're trying to get, we, we, there's work to freedom and you can be free, but still be a slave and look back like the Israelites did and go, man, slavery was kind of good. No, it wasn't. You just haven't fully tasted freedom. You can kind of just see it. It's like going to a steakhouse and looking at everybody eat and saying, oh, that looks nice, but not tasting it for yourself. And today I want to help you get free, but there are some steps we got to take and there's some steps that Joshua took. And the Israelites were promised this land flowing with milk and honey, this territory that was theirs, the promised land. But there were some issues. So let me read Joshua 1 verse 1. The Bible says this, it says... After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come. Somebody say, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. So I want to give you a few things today for you to possess your land, for you to walk into your new season. I encourage you to take notes. Here's the first thing. New seasons call for new mindsets. For you to possess your potential, you have to think differently. Amen. For you to possess your elevation, your victory, for you to experience your potential in life, you got to think differently. 2021 was good, but what God wants to do in 2022, balcony, It's going to cause for you to change the way you think. Moses represented the old guard, the old way of doing things. Moses accomplished some great things. It's to be celebrated. He got Israel out of slavery. He's in the hall of faith in Hebrews. We're we're not negating who Moses was, and we shouldn't negate victories and things that happened in our lives. We should just learn from them. We're not throwing them out. We're not throwing the negatives out. We're not throwing the blessings and the good things out. We're remembering, we're also learning. Why? Because Moses had some challenges. Moses had some challenges. In Deuteronomy 3, chapter tw- verse 25, the Bible says this, Moses pleading with God, please let me cross the Jordan to see the wonderful land on the other side. The beautiful hill country and the Lebanon mountains. But the Lord was angry with me because of you. Talking about the Israelites. And he would not listen to me. That's a rough verse. Especially because he's writing it. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a rough verse because you see a man who did some great things for God. Uh, overall, he's in the hall of faith in Hebrews. We would agree Moses was a good guy. Would you agree with that? God, God, God loved him. God used him. But Moses did not meet his potential. Moses wandered in a wilderness with people for 40 years in a circle when going into his potential was really across the pond. I mean, I mean think about that. And I've been thinking about that and I would hate that for you. I would hate that for me to get to the end of my life and God goes, hey, the cloud by day, the fire by night, the, the quail, the manna from heaven, you saw some good things, but there was more and you missed it because you let some things fester in you and you never dealt with them. See, new victories, new land, new potential, new seasons call for a new mindset. And Moses, you never really changed your mind. You were angry and it made me angry. You never dealt with this. And so because you never dealt with this, you did not get to walk into all that I promised for you. That's a warning for us. That passage of scripture is, hey, you should take inventory of your life. What are areas of your life that might limit your full potential? And if you don't change the way you think, You may not experience all God has promised. And it has nothing to do with God being a bad father. No, God is not an enabler. He's a good father. And because he's not an enabler, he is not going to allow old mindsets into new territories. Because when you get to the new territory, you will not sustain the blessing if you've not transformed your minds. 
And that is why we offer our bodies. We offer our souls. That's why Paul says, I, I, I owned my body. I beat myself into submission as a slave, if you will, because I did not want to be disqualified because new territories call for new mindsets. And God's going, Moses, I love you, brother. You'll be with me for eternity, but there was more for you. What I'm telling you today is God has promises over your life. God has victory for your family. God has victory for your ministries or for your businesses. God, God's got stuff for you. What are some Moses elements in your life that got to die and stay so that you can possess all God has promised you? I might say it, but I might not. You got to ask the Holy Spirit, what is it? And as we paused in a moment of worship and we were still saying, God, we love you. We're, we're waiting on you. Maybe God already began to speak some of that to you. You know, there's certain attitudes, ideas, and activities that God simply cannot allow into a new season. Why? Because yesterday's wonders weren't bad. It's just that there's a different tenacity needed for today's opportunities. There is. And, and some of us have to unlearn some things. You know, I, when I was, uh, I, I grew up, we, we got saved. We gave our life to Christ in a church in Orlando, Florida. When I went off to college, I went to Dallas, Texas, and I was there and I was trying out all kinds of different churches uh, because I needed to find a church home. I was going to black churches. I had so much fun, stuck out like a sore thumb. I was like, ah. I was going to all kinds of different churches, reformed churches, verse by verse churches, you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was having a ball checking things out, but I found a church that reminded me a little bit of home but also had some new methods, some new ideas. It had some new ways of doing things that I had never seen before. What was happening back at home in Orlando where we got saved wasn't wrong. It was great. But God was trying to open up my mind to new things so that he could take me to new territories. And for some of us, we've been coming to church and kind of doing the same thing for a long time. Maybe some of us are new to church. Maybe some of us decided in 2022 we're coming back to church. Whatever it is, maybe we're new to Christ, new to God. Or maybe we come and we sit in the same seat every week. We drink the same coffee. We do the same sort of thing. I'm not telling you to change your coffee. You know what I'm saying. Here's what I mean. We do the same stuff. And what I want to encourage you in 2022 is unlearn some things, appreciate what was, and go deeper to where God wants you to go today. You got to take the limits off of what God can do, of what God can call you to. Maybe God's calling you to a deeper place of serving, but you've done the same thing over and over again. Take the limits off. Maybe God's calling you to a deeper place of generosity and you've gotten comfortable with your 10% and praise God you're returning to him, but maybe there's more. You've gotten comfortable with your seat. You've gotten comfortable with your position, gotten comfortable in your job, gotten comfortable in your way of life. And what if God wants to take you higher, but you're stuck in a mindset that's not what God has for you? I just want to provoke you and your thinking today and help you understand that God has more for where you are. Let's change the way we think. And the way we change how we think is when we change how we speak. In Proverbs, the Bible says this, and this is convicting, and I need help with this. 1820, the Bible says a man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequences. Somebody say consequences. Consequences of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. The reason that so many of us stay stuck is because our tongue is full of curses. And I don't, I don't necessarily mean curse words. Maybe you've overcome that, or maybe you've never had a problem with curse words. That's not what I mean. Curse words aren't the problem. Cursing life is the problem. I'm not a morning person. Anybody, I mean, I, I, I'm literally angry when I wake up. I'm like, why? Now, I have children. This might be a reason because <laughs> God's not up. My kids are. My son, hey, hey, you want to play? Hey, what? Do I want to play standing at the side of my bed? Hey, wake up, wake up. So my son's four. I, this year, I'm going to teach him how to make coffee because I don't want him to talk to me. 
I don't want him to look at me. I don't want him to smile at me, say a word. You're not allowed to breathe, son, until you bring me coffee. I can't even think. I can't even function without the stuff. I'm an addict. God told me you can be addicted to coffee. It's fine. And I don't put nothing in it. That's why. See, I just drink it black. That's the only way to drink it. Anyway, I digress. But what I, my natural inclination is to do this, is to wake up and, and curse. Now, I don't mean looking at my wife and be like, you know, bleep you. You know, that, that's what I mean. Some of you are like, I do that. <laughs> don't. My natural inclination is to be like, oh, today, I don't want to do this today. Oh, I don't want to deal with that person today. Oh, I don't want that drama today. I don't feel like, man, I don't want to deal with the traffic today. I just, I don't, I don't have the energy to play with you today. I, I don't want to, oh, another day. And what we're doing is we're cursing our soil that we're standing on. We're, 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 we're cursing the day before we even begin. And I need accountability on this, but I'm telling you, for you to change the way you think, you have to change the way you speak. Your mind and your heart will catch up with your tongue. It happens every time. That's why the Bible calls us and tells us to call things or not as though they are. And so I want to commission you in 2022, if you do nothing else, is start speaking life when you wake up. Start speaking blessing no matter what takes place. God, you're faithful. You were faithful yesterday. You're going to be faithful today. God, I need you. And I'm not saying don't be, don't be fake. I'm not saying to not be fake. I'm just saying speak life. God, I wake up in the morning. God, today, you're going to give me victory in that situation. Today, open doors are going to take place. Today, we're going to have victory in our business. Today, my children are going to be safe. Today, my children are going to get along. Today, my wife and I are going to love each other. Today, I declare with all of my heart, my soul, and my mind, I'm yours, God. I'm listening for you, Holy Spirit. What we got to do is open up our mouth and speak blessing and call things into place. And until we do that, we'll stay stuck. You got to speak to mountains. You got to speak to circumstances. By faith, we receive. How do we receive salvation? By grace, through faith. How do we receive victory in our life? Well, we've got to be obedient, but it starts by receiving by faith and speaking what needs to take place. Now, some of you are looking at me like, wow, he's a word of faith preacher. No. I've just learned that my words cloud the atmosphere. And I've learned that the Bible is what it says it is. I will eat the fruit of my words, whether good or bad, consequences or victory. If I want to harvest, I got to speak to the ground and tell it to come forth. And you can do that in 2022. But the only way to have new mindsets so you don't get stuck as a Moses is to start speaking the victory even to the hard places. Are you following me today? Are you following me today? In verse three, to Joshua, God says, I promise you what I promised Moses. You see that? God promised Moses the promised land, but he fell short. And God says the same thing to Joshua. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. Come on, I received that today. You need to say that when you wake up in the morning. Today, I'm walking on land that God has given me. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. And then God says this to him, be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. And then in verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave to you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Then. The reality is this. You want to walk into new territory, you need new mindsets, but new seasons also call for new courage. New seasons call for new courage, new strength, new grit, new guts. You want to walk into your potential? You want to possess the land that God has promised you? You want to see victory in your life? It's going to take some new courage, some new grit, some new muscle that maybe you don't have quite yet. And problems 
Problems cause you to either persevere or fall backwards. But perseverance builds your faith muscles. And so every problem in your life is actually an opportunity for you to grow stronger in your faith and grow towards what God wants to do for you in your life. God says this beautiful word to Joshua. He feels like he can do anything. When he says this, but how many of you come from a weekend service like today or an event, you'll hear this word, you'll be fired up, and then on your way out of the parking lot, somebody cuts you off and you're like, I hope they die. Am I right? Or like, or like man, you, 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 you go and you do a prayer walk by yourself around your neighborhood and you walk inside and then all of a sudden your spouse says something and you're like, you're like everything that you just prayed and declared goes out the window and you're ready to murder that person. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's just, we're a little different in, on the East. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like something just, you have a victory with God and then immediately the devil tries you. You give for the first time and your car breaks down, right? You, you serve for the, you, you show up to serve and like, and like no alarms go off. You know, it's like the world falls apart. You know, your kids are sick all of a sudden. Like, like any time, uh, it's, it's almost a guarantee. And it's not to scare you. It's just to prepare you. Almost every time you take a step in walking into your purpose, walking to your potential, the enemy freaks out. He does. You take ground, the enemy is freaking out because he wants to take the ground back. And you shouldn't be afraid of that. You just got to know if you're going to move forward with God, the enemy's going to not go without kicking and screaming. Because before, before you were in Christ or before you were really moving in your potential, you weren't a threat to the enemy. He wasn't bothering you. But all of a sudden, you bowed up and got some guts and some grit. Well, now the enemy's freaking out because he doesn't want to lose what you're gaining. And with Joshua, what happens is so crazy because, you know, every promised land comes with problems. Every, every promised land comes with the promise of problems. I mean, sure, there's blessing and sure, there's freedom and sure, there's victory and, and sure, there's hope and sure, there's, there's, there's what you prayed for. But it also comes with a little bit of stress. It also comes with a little bit of challenge. It's kind of like you get the house, but you don't want the maintenance. You know what I'm talking about? In other words, every, every blessing comes with a healthy burden. And what happens to the people of God is, okay, Joshua takes over. God's going to be with you. But don't forget, Joshua, be real courageous. Don't deviate. And so Joshua's like, all right, let's go. And so what do they do? They march first battle, they march around Jericho. Anybody know the Jericho song? I had it, but I just lost it. Okay. They might, it doesn't matter. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Jericho. Jer- okay. Anyway. <laughs> Heathens, y'all don't know your, your Bible songs. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, they march and what happens? They blow, blow and the, and the wall falls. No, they don't blow. I was thinking of the big bad wolf. Kids rhymes, you know, it's better. Well, the walls come out, they shout, they don't have to lift a finger, they get victory. And they're looking around going, man, why didn't we do this sooner? Have you ever been there where you, where you say yes to God and then you experience the victory and you go, man, why didn't I do this sooner? And then all the younger generation is going, oh man, what was wrong with our parents? And then they like, you know, they write hashtag boomer, you know? <laughs> and like, they're all, they're all like, oh, they're all real cocky about it, right? So they go, they win a victory, they win a battle, they're feeling good, but then guess what? They fight 12 more battles before they fully possess the land. See, we don't like to hear that. We just want, hey, persevere, God will be with us. Blessings come. Yeah, and they do, you know? God's good, he's faithful. But also, there's 12 more battles before you walk into what God's promised you. And guess what? They win the first one, they lose the second one. You know why they lose the second one? They deviate. They take things that weren't theirs. This whole story, it's a paradigm of our lives. What happens is, is they settled for one win when God's going, okay, you took a little ground, but there's more for you. 
That there's more for you. Not only do you need a new mindset, you need new courage because another battle is coming. Another fight will come. And that doesn't mean you walk and wake and you, and you live with trepidation. It just means that you know that today and every day, I got to put the full armor of God on my life. I got to put the full armor of God on my kids. It means that I know the enemy's going to try me every step I take to walk in victory. And you've got a choice. Am I going to walk into my potential or am I going to be satisfied with a good date night but not a good marriage? Because God, listen to me, church. God has more for you than a good week of vacation where nobody fought. God wants you to experience a good family where fighting or arguing turns into results, not people leaving. Because, you know, you can actually fight fair in your house. You know, you can actually have a real disagreement and nobody storm out and run to the liquor store. But just know that as you take advances... As God blesses you, as you have a good week on vacation with your family, you're coming home and the enemy's going to be waiting to try to knock you out and keep you off your feet. But you got to get 10 toes down and go, God, you have all of me. You got all of my family. Come what may, come hell or high water. I got the courage to stay. Fight. To fight for what's right. You know what courage is? Courage is integrity. Courage is character. Courage is purity. Courage is righteousness. It's doing the right thing and declaring that there's absolute truth, even when everybody tells you that the truth is relative. And there is absolute truth, and there is absolute freedom. Are you going to fight the 12, 13? Here's what I'm saying. No matter how many battles come your way, are you going to stay with the kind of courage and muster to possess the land that God's given you? And I believe you can because it's a new season. But it starts with changing your mindset and it starts with saying, God, give me the courage. Put on the full armor of God over me. Help me use my mouth the way you want me to use it. Help me use my mind the way you want me to use it. No matter what, I've made a decision. I'm not going back. I made a decision. I made a decision. Because it would have been tempting. It would have been real tempting for Joshua to win Jericho and then go, all right, God, we good. We won. And then look and go, wow, 12 more, ba- more battles. And then lose the second one and be like, this is too much. The weight is too heavy. But I'm so thankful that Joshua had the courage and he saw the big picture. And my hope for you is that you, have the, you see the big picture, that we're living for eternity. We're living to see people come to Christ. We're living to see our families not just, not, not just, just struggle along, but thrive. We're living to see the fruit of our harvest. We're, we're, li- we're staying in it long enough to not give up and give in. And I believe that's the kind of courage God wants to pour out over you. And verse five, and I'm almost done. The Bible says, then Joshua told the people, purify yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will do great wonders among you. I love that. Purify yourself. See new seasons, new victories, new pathways, your potential. It certainly calls for new mindsets. It calls for new courage, but it also calls for a new normal. A, a new normal uh, and accepting that things need to change and we're not going back to the way they were. Joshua uses this, this word, purify yourself or consecrate. And essentially what it means is to wholly dedicate yourself to something of greatest importance. Uh, when spoken plainly, consecration means this, the act of setting yourself aside and dedicating, your, dedicating yourself to God and his mission. Joshua knew it was coming and he knew it would take a people purified and not distracted. See, a lot of us don't purify ourselves because we're distracted by things that provide us brief healing, brief relief, and emotional highs. This is, this is why we get caught up in addiction and we don't mean to. Or this is why we're so addicted to our telephones or to TV shows, 
or we're addicted to even hanging out late with our guys too many times, drinking just a little too much. What, what we do, what, what we do is, is, is because life is hard and life is challenging, we, we try to medicate ourselves with, with brief moments of healing. The problem is, is we always come back to the place where the pain rises up again. What I'm telling you is, is, is God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ at the center of your life, full free. He is the only place where you can have full satisfaction, full peace, full confidence, and meet your full potential. And I'm not saying that there aren't hobbies and things that we do and that we should do in life. Absolutely, enjoy your life. But what happens is, is we get distracted by things that are good, but not God. We start dating people and we're like, oh, this is good. But then that relationship overwhelms our pursuit of God and we get distracted from our potential. We pick up a third shift or a fourth shift and we don't need the third or fourth shift or job or whatever it is. And it's good because it's good money, but it's not fully God for our whole life. When we get distracted, I don't know what it is for you, but I can easily get distracted by good things that are not God things. And I want to, I want to encourage you. I want to warn you. Joshua's going, look, you want to, we got to possess the land. If we're going to do it, we've got to purify ourselves, consecrate ourselves. We got to burn some things away that don't look like God that are going to keep us down from running into the full potential of our peopleness. It, it reminds me, as I close, it reminds me of, of the story of Elisha and his calling. Elisha is this young man who's threshing the weed and he's feeding the oxen and he's doing work for his family and the great prophet Elijah comes to him. God had asked Elijah to prepare his replacement and he throws his cloak on Elisha and he says, come follow me. It's a type and shadow of what it means to be a disciple. Come follow me, leave everything behind, consecrate yourself. And Elisha's like, I gotta say bye to my parents. And Elijah's like, I'm sorry I did this to you. Basically like, hey, the calling is great. I'm calling you to a higher level, to a higher place, to a new season. And Elisha's like, no, I'm in for it. And he, listen to what Elisha does. He burns all of the equipment that it took for him to do his old job. Nothing wrong with supplying for his family. Nothing wrong with what he was doing. But there was a new season, so there had to then be a new normal. And he burns it and he says, okay, I'm coming with you, man of God. Teach me everything you know. And I think that that is such a powerful illustration of what it means to consecrate yourself. And what I'm telling you today, Rivers Crossing Church, people of God, is there are probably some things we got to burn and leave behind in 2021 so can, we can walk into the fullness of our 2022. There might be some side conversations, some side relationships, some things we look at and watch. There might be some habits. There might be some stuff where God's saying, purify yourself because I want to do wonders over you and in your life. Will you do what it takes? Some of us look back on 2021 and we see good things and God's blessing and God's favor and we should. Some of us look back and we see grief and pain. And for me, 2021 was full of, of some of the lowest lows and highest highs. I mean, I had some heartbreaks. I, I had some frustrations. I, I had some relationships break down. I, I thought God was gonna do a few things and it just happened differently. On the contrary, we got to go to, on a sabbatical as a family. It was wonderful. We, we welcomed a new child. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, been a, a, it's been a beautiful disaster, 2021. Church has been so hard. Uh, Philadelphia, we broke murder records this year. Craziness. I mean, and I've, I've had this individual who's been harassing me for a couple years. They'd send emails after email, using scripture out of context, crazy stuff. Then would show up to our offices, where's Pastor Joey? Looking for me, screaming. Started showing up at my house, writing notes, saying that they were going to kill my kids, burn my house down. You, you got to get the police involved, but there, there's a limit as to, to what they allow our police to do in our city. And there's just a lot of challenges. And one day I'm sitting at the park and my son's playing in the water. He's three and a half at this point. I'm texting my wife. I look up and this person is standing over me. 
And I'm like, oh, this is bad. And I could just feel the demons, you know, like fuming off of them. And I said, hey, this isn't the place. And, and they start screaming at me. They're saying this to me. Stop following me. Stop harassing me. You left a dead bird in my house. I was like, that's my signature. You know, like, <laughs> that's, I leave dead birds, you know, because I'm trying to pass the bird flu to everybody. Okay, too soon. Okay. <laughs> and so my son runs over because he's hearing all kinds of F words and all kinds of stuff. And, and so I, I, I put him in my arms and I start backing up. It's just instinct, right? I'm, I want to protect him. She's screaming. He, they, whatever, sorry. It's a, it was a woman. Okay, I was trying to keep that forgot. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm backing up. I'm backing myself up into a corner. And she throws her backpack down on, on, the, on the bench and starts fumbling in her backpack. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to die. She's going to pull out a gun, which is a very common thing in our city, and she's going to shoot me. And so I'm holding my son, and, and almost everything slows down. I'm over here, and it just slows down slow motion. I'm like, I'm going to throw my son and say, run home, and I'm just going to die right here in the park. And that's the end of my life. Hope I did everything God called me to do. Hope I met my potential. And, and so as I'm about to throw my son, she pulls out, it's funny now, she, she pulls out a hatchet. And I'm, and I'm thinking, uh, to my delight, I'm thinking, that's weird. <laughs> my wife did this to me once. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love my wife. I, I'm thinking, I, can, I think I can survive this, I think. You know, I'm, I'm fat fit, you know, I'm an athlete, you know, I can, so, 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 so she pulls, a, pulls this, this thing out and I'm going, well, let's go, you know, like, and I had a couple thoughts. I was thinking, I was thinking I was going to put my son down and I was just going to fight her and win, you know, but then I was like, I don't want my son to see that. And then also in this day and age, pastor kills, you know, woman, I was like, man, I just, and I had that thought, thankfully, thank, thank you, Holy Spirit, you know? Because if I was in my flesh, that would have been it, you know? I think. And so anyway, for the next 15 minutes, and I'm, I'm holding my son, I'm calling the police, trying to get people there. I'm evading her in the park, hiding behind, uh, behind swings and, 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 uh, and, and, you know, whatever I could hide behind. I mean, I'm like hiding behind like little ponies in the park, like trying not to get killed. And I'm asking people for help. And everybody's like, oh, this is pretty normal. This is like a domestic thing. I'm not getting involved. I'm like, this is not my woman. Please stop. Please help. Why are you laughing at my tragedy? I don't understand. <laughs> and I'm freaking out, you know, like I, and I'm trying to stay calm because my son is literally, my three and a half year old is on my shoulder, or excuse me, on my chest going, dad, we good? <laughs> like, are, are we okay? And I'm like, buddy, it's just, it's just the devil and angels are protecting us. Angels are protecting us. I promise we're good. He's like, I need my sword. <laughs> he has like a plastic sword. I'm like, bro, I'm like, we're not, we don't fight, you know, you know, I'm like trying to quote scriptures, you know, we don't fight. Anyway, eventually, it takes about 15 minutes, police show up and these three men build a wall and it like, it ends like all of a sudden. And like in the moment, you know, your adrenaline's going and like, you know, I'm like, I can't wait to tell the story. And then, and then after I'm like, oh my goodness, what just happened? Somebody tried to kill me. And they're screaming and cursing and accusing. I mean, I knew it was the enemy. Anytime you get accused. And I asked the Holy Spirit, why did she keep saying, listen to me, listen to me, look at me. Why did she keep saying that I'm harassing her? And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, because you are. And I said, and he goes, you are harassing the spirit that, that rules and reigns over this territory. You actually started to make some moves, son. Don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. I'm calling you to a new normal. A new normal. And, I, and I'm like, D does this new normal, God, mean that people are trying to kill me every day? Because, like, I'm not sure my wife's going to like that. But it wasn't about that. It was an awareness of the spirit realm. 
It was an awareness that, hey, I got one life. And as I was sitting there going, as I was sitting there going, okay, is this it for me? Like, is this the end? I kept bringing, man, did I meet my potential? Did I, did I walk into the promised land? And I'm all about giving something to the next generation. I'm all about giving things to the, to the sons and daughters. But like, you know what? I'm not done yet. Like, I know there's more for me and my church and my ministry and my family. I just thought God said, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. I want you to walk. No, I want you to march. No, I want you to run into all God has for you. Do not stop. Do not quit. Change your minds. Get some courage. There's a new normal. Consecrate yourself for today. I'm going to do wonders among you. And I speak that over you, church. I speak that over the church of Jesus Christ. Come what may, hell or high water, put your toes down and say, God, no matter what, I'm staying for the fight. I'm purifying myself today. Make me holy. Make me righteous. I want all you have for me. And if you're still breathing, God is not done with you yet. There's still more to give. There's still more to serve. There's still more to sow. There's still more for you to do. There's still more people to love, more people to save. There's still a nation to transform. There's still a city to see revived. If you're breathing, God wants to keep working. And Joshua, at the end of his life, I, I, I'm, I'm done. But Joshua 23, 14, he goes, soon I will die going the way of everything on earth. Deep in your hearts, you know that every promise of the Lord has come true and not a single one has failed. Uh, at the end of my life, just like, just like Joshua said, hey, I know every promise of the Lord came true. Not one has failed. When David's at the end of the life, I did, I did everything I was supposed to do in my generation. When Paul, at the end of his life, I ran my race. I did what I was asked. I want to live with no regrets. Friends, it's a new season. And because it's a new season, it calls for new mindsets, new courage, and a new normal. Consecrate yourself today for tomorrow, even this afternoon. The Lord wants to do great wonders among you. If you believe that, will you say yes and amen? Come on. Come on, if you believe that, come on, let's possess that. Yes and amen. Rivers Crossing, I love you so much. I love you. Your pastor will be back next week, but let him know if you want me to come back. I'd love to come see you soon. Let's stand to our feet. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. And as we close, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Please, no, as, as little moving as possible, because there are people here today, no doubt, you're far from God. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. You're not where you need to be in your journey with God. Maybe at one point you were following Jesus, but you're not anymore. Or maybe you've never invited him to be Lord and Savior. Don't start this year not being in the family of God. The tr- Jesus Christ, he is our gift. He is the best decision you could ever make. And with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're in this place and you're far from God, from the balcony, online, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you're not where you need to be in your relationship with God, if you are here today far from God and you need to get right with him, you need to begin a journey with him, would you lift your hand at me right now? I want to pray for you. Right now. I want to pray for you in this room. Said, I need to get right with God. I need to begin a journey with God. I see you. Thank you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. People's hands going up all over the place. I see you. I see you. Today's the day of salvation. Don't hesitate. You can put it down. Anybody else? Said, I need to get right with God. I need to get right with God. I need to begin a journey with God. Best decision you will ever make. This will be the greatest year of your life. It may not get easier, but it will get better. And every person in this room who's lifted their hands, I want the whole body to say this prayer out loud to encourage everybody. So can we say this loud and proud as loud as we can? Can we just say, Jesus, come on, loud and proud. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for grace. I receive grace today. I receive you today. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Raise me like you were raised. You can have all of me. I receive all of you. In Jesus' name. Come on, amen. Can we give God a praise for those people who crossed the line of faith and entered the family of God? Come on, people online, put the hand emoji up in the chat. You're a part of the family of God. I always say this at our church. 
following Jesus, it may not get easier, but it will get better. It absolutely will. Before we go, can we just declare that we're going to wait on the Lord in 2022? Loud and proud. Let's sing together. God bless you. I love you, church. If you came prepared to give today, three different ways to do that. And it's because of your generosity that we get to take more ground for the kingdom in more places like Philadelphia and around the world this year through church planting. So thank you for that. If you have a prayer need, something that came up in your spirit over the course of the last hour, we've got an awesome prayer team. They've been praying for you and they would be so honored to pray with you in the last glass room on the left as you leave today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great Sunday.